Deep Dika Laurent now joins me for the press review, what's making the news here in France. Uh, welcome, Deep Dika. A lot of papers today leading uh, with the unrest in Iran. That's right. Liberation, the left-leading paper, calls it the awakening of fear. The paper explains that after several days of protests that have unnerved the Iranian regime, the movement now risks being, quote, smothered by that very regime, as you see on the front page of Libé's uh, on, on Libé's front page, it comes after the head of the Revolutionary Guard, of course, declared that the movement had been quelled on Wednesday. The paper is really alarmed by what it calls a heavy sanctions against those who dare protest despite the fear of repression. Uh, the paper also says that foreign leaders need to assure these protesters that the world is indeed watching them, supporting them and hearing their demands. Now, the Catholic paper La Croix is looking at the reasons uh, behind this uh, recent wave of demonstrations. The reasons behind this uprising, you might say, that's what La Croix says on its front page, uh, une révolte. It's not just about young people and uh, the paper explains there are families, there are pensioners also in the streets protesting about what they see as a government's failure to de deliver on promises of economic betterment in the country. This, of course, after the nuclear deal was signed. This uh, amid rising costs of living as well as unemployment and poverty. For La Croix, though, uh, the Iranian government is far from being overthrown. The regime is still solid, it says, in the face of these protests. And it may have several cards still up its sleeve to quell the rebellion. And this really seems to be the sentiment that's shared by Les Echos, the French business paper, which says that the regime has taken the upper hand and that the protests seem to be at least, quote, interrupted. Now, you found a bit of French politics news today in uh, Le Parisien paper. Well, 2018 is not starting off well for France's Socialist Party. That's, of course, a party of former President François Hollande. Uh, we know that the party sort of exploded into pieces following last year's presidential election. They also had to sell off their iconic headquarters for financial reasons, and they're still yet to find a new leader. It seems it's a position that nobody wants. Uh, who still wants the Socialist Party? Uh, uh, that's what Le Parisien is wondering in this article. The latest non-candidate is former Education Minister Najat Valo belkacem uh, she's definitely not throwing her hat, her name into the hat. She, she actually tells the website Lobs that she doesn't want, quote, a life reduced to politics. Worth noting, she's actually not serving in any ministry under Emmanuel Macron's government. She says now, I quote, I really want to reflect, work and understand other worlds. Now, she may not be a politician anymore, but she's definitely got a knack for vague phrases. Yeah. Well, now you found uh, some reactions as well to... Uh, the French president's speech last night to the press. Well, f the French president, Ma Emmanuel Macron, did address the media uh, for his sort of New Year's Day tradition and defended, first of all, his decision to sort of keep a distance between himself and French journalists, to sort of keep them at bay. He also did announce a new law tackling fake news, in, in particular imposing tougher rules on social media around election time, a not-so-subtle dig at Russia. That's what many of the French papers are saying. The Huffington Post, though, is not so convinced. The website says there's still a lot of work to be done on defining what exactly is fake news. To pass a law, the first order of business is separating freedom of expression from communication from political propaganda, from fake news. All of these are very different things, and it's certainly not going to be an easy task trying to sort through them. And I hope they don't uh, lump together the satirical news as well, which right. obviously sometimes is, is great. Um, finally, your last story is about a culinary subversion on a very famous French tradition that takes place this Sunday, La Galette des Rois. It's for Epiphany, I believe. That's right. Epiphany, which falls on January the 6th. Traditionally, it, this celebration is either on January the 6th or the Sunday following it, uh, celebrating the day that the three kings brought gifts to baby Jesus. The idea in France is, of course, to share a delicious, crusty pastry tart filled with almond, uh, with an almond filling or a frangipan fanny filling. The person, of course, who bites into the piece with the little uh, statue of a king or queen hidden inside is named king or queen for the day. It's kind of a fun tradition post-Christmas. Well, the Huffington Post reports that this year one cheese shop uh, is trying to subvert that very Franco-French tradition. Instead of sweet pastries, they're making a crusty block of creamy cheese and uh, with a little statue hidden inside of it, uh, not in the form of a king or queen, but a little cow that'll be uh, hidden in these blocks of cheese. 
worth noting that the cheese shop is known for uh, innovative products, you might say, but I'm not sure I'm so convinced. I still love those almond-filled pastries. Well, I like cheese, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this one. Well, 